Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Great news, we've added several cool new features to DronePilot Canada version 2.8. If you've already purchased DronePilot Canada, upgrading to the new version is absolutely free. If you haven't yet, hey, join the thousands of happy users of DronePilot Canada today. Let's check out those new features. The main new feature in version 2.8 is the ability to assign a flight plan to a flight log. So if you create a Drone Pilot Canada flight plan for a mission you're gonna do at some point in the future, you can now save that flight plan right on your device. Then after you've actually executed the mission, you can assign that flight plan directly to the flight log, thus providing a documentation trail from planning and preparation through to completion. And this works in the team environment as well. So you can do your flight plan on one device and record your flight on another. Simple, intuitive, and seamless. Let's walk through this to demonstrate. Let's suppose you're getting ready for your flight review. I prepare a Drone Pilot Canada flight plan using the flight planning feature. I identify the date and time of the review and call the mission something clever like, oh, I know, flight review. I proceed to mark out my flight area, note a couple of hazards, and finalize the plan. Now, as usual, we can simply send the PDF of the plan as an attachment to an email, and we'll do that. But now you have the new option to save the flight plan for later assignment to a flight log, or you can just discard it if you wish. A few days later, you're nervous as heck about your flight review, but everything goes smoothly. You show the reviewer your Drone Pilot Canada flight plan, she thinks it's great, fully complete, and very clear. You then do the actual flight mission, taking a picture of a tree or whatever it is you said in the flight plan. You record your flight info using Drone Pilot Canada and close off the log after your flight. Now, when you access your flight log, down here you'll see a new button saying Assign Flight Plan. Tapping that will display a list of unassigned flight plans on your device. For each one, you'll see the mission identifier, the date they were planned for, and the plan creation date. They're sorted by planned date. And if you're part of a team, all of the unassigned flight plans for your entire team will appear here. So maybe a teammate created your plan, for example, and you can assign it with your flight record right here. Okay, so here's our flight review plan. We just tap it and are offered three choices assign it to our flight, view it, or just cancel and go back to the list. Let's assign it to our flight. Now we see the word assigned in the information space and the button has changed from flight plan to view flight plan. So you can just tap it there if you wanna look at it. And really that's all there is to it for the normal process of doing a flight plan, doing your flight, and tying the two together. But of course there are a few other things you might wanna do. Maybe you picked the wrong flight plan and assigned it. So just tap on it to get back to the list. Your currently assigned flight plan is highlighted and you can either just unassign it from the flight log with the clear flight plan button or pick a different plan. It's easy. And if you're worried about accumulating a ton of old flight plans on your device, you can review the list of flight plans on the documents menu right here and simply delete them. Now flight plans can't be deleted when they're already assigned to a flight record, but of course you can always delete the entire flight log or clear the flight plan from an old flight log and delete that plan. Lots of flexibility. By the way, flight plans are typically only a few meg, so they're pretty small, smaller than most pictures you'd take. So it's not usually gonna be a big problem having a few on your phone. Oh, and one subtle safety feature. When you delete a flight plan, you're only deleting your local copy. Copies on other devices in your team are not deleted. This prevents you from deleting your colleagues' flight plans accidentally or on April Fool's Day. Flight plans are automatically backed up with your other data when you enable Drone Pilot Canada backups. I hope you did enable your backups, didn't you? That's really important. And they're also exported when you export flight logs. The second feature in this release is more mapping detail for NOTAMs. 
NOTAMs, or Notices to Airmen, are the method used by Nav Canada to raise temporary no-fly zones or warning areas. We represent NOTAM zones in Drone Pilot Canada using the NOTAM's geographical centre and the circular, what they call the area of influence, as defined by the NOTAM data. Sometimes, though, this area of influence circle is actually much larger than the true restricted zone defined by the NOTAM. Strangely enough, this feature was inspired by the truckers' protest in January when a no-fly zone NOTAM was raised around downtown Ottawa. The NOTAM boundary circle was huge, as you can see here, but the text of the NOTAM included a series of lat-long um, coordinates that defined the actual restricted zone. I mapped it out manually using the Drone Pilot Canada plot points feature, and it looked like this. The downtown NOTAM has long since expired, thankfully, so I can't use that as a demo. But here is a blasting one in Quebec with a similar set of lat long points defining the actual warning area. Drone Pilot Canada maps these points out so you know exactly where the true defined area is. One interesting backstory here. When we were developing this feature, we used this same blasting NOTAM as a test case. But the lat long points in the text actually had several errors in them. So I contacted Nav Canada and they had it fixed up and meeting the proper NOTAM spec the next day. Pretty quick response. The third improvement in this release is also related to NOTAMs as it happens. With the portrayal of NOTAM related zones right on the Drone Pilot Canada map, the NOTAM button itself has less value than it used to have. So we've moved that function up here to the dot menu where you can still easily access it to see the full list of NOTAMs and a link to the Nav Canada NOTAM website. In its place on the map, we've put an airspace button, providing easier access to the very important Assess Airspace function that was previously on the dot menu. Enjoy. The next improvement is better screen rotation for Android devices. We've supported both portrait and landscape views on tablets before this, but not on phones or smaller tablets like the Triple Tech. Our thinking was that our app screens would be kind of awkward on the typical tall, narrow phones when you turn them sideways. But phones are getting bigger now and we've had time to solve the layout issues. Basically what we've done is address this in two ways. First, we now allow all the menus and various editing screens to scroll so you can hold your device sideways and you'll be able to access all the functionality in an easy and natural way. And it is nice to be able to flip between Drone Pilot Canada and your flight control app without doing the twisty turny thing with your neck. The screen will switch orientations only if you're on the map itself. If you're in a menu or editing screen, it will stay in that orientation as you switch screens. And if you really hate operating in landscape mode for whatever reason, we have a disallow rotation option on the dot menu right here. It will lock you in portrait mode regardless of your device orientation. Our next improvement in this release is to address a problem a number of people have reported seeing but could not easily reproduce. You'd start the flight timer on your Drone Pilot Canada app, do your flight, but when you return to close off your flight log, the app wouldn't be running and the timer would be zero. It turns out that both iOS and Android have rather ruthless memory management schemes. If the top running app, which would usually be DJI, needs more memory, apps running in the background are happily killed off to make room. And that's what was happening. So we've worked around this issue such that when you return to Drone Pilot Canada, it will restart, the time, timer will properly resume, including all your flight time, and you can end your flight log naturally. Finally, a minor tweak thanks to a user suggestion. The first letter on text in little text boxes like say the flight title is now always capitalized. Thanks Trevor, great idea and I love it. 
There you have it, a whole raft of new features and improvements in Drone Pilot Canada version 2.8. I hope you'll find these useful, and I know I will. Oh, and by the way, be sure to become a member of the Drone Pilot Association of Canada. Membership is free, and there's a link in the description of the video. DPAC is an advocacy group aiming to simplify the drone rules to make it better for all of us, and especially for recreational and light commercial drone pilots. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.